it guys, welcome to another video. Um, today we are talking about answering a 14 marker question. Now this is the biggest question on your exam paper and it goes through design skills and production skills. So it's a little bit challenging, it's a little bit tricky and it's really worth putting in the time to make sure you know how to answer it properly. So here are the key elements of answering a 14 marker question. You need to make the audience central to your answer. You always, 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 when you're writing in drama, talking about how the audience will react, what your intention is and how you want the audience to respond. Your ideas need to represent or symbolize the themes and the wider messages of the play. So when you're thinking about something like costume, you're thinking about how you can use costume to demonstrate status or class or power. You wanna be justifying and supporting the ideas with evidence from the extract, which means using quotes. You're using your key subject terminology and you're using words from the question and we'll go through all of that as we move on. But those are the five things that you're really, really focused on when you're answering a 14 marker. So step one, the first thing you need to do is have an understanding of the play as a whole because the 14 marker is asking you about the entire play and your ideas for the whole thing. So you need to know when the play was written, the kind of style it is, the historical context. So when was it written? When was it first performed? How are those different? How would it first have been performed? What's the world that the play is set within? What does that world look like? You need to have a really good understanding of the base ideas. And then on top of that, the writer's intentions and the writer's purposes. So what's the writer doing this for and why? And what's the message that they're trying to convey? Once you've got all of that, you can move on to step two. Now, in a 14 marker, we're thinking about design. And when we're thinking about design, we're always thinking about establishing time, atmosphere, and location. Those are your three key words when you're thinking about design. The time can be the time of day, so it could be midday, it could be the time period. So obviously, for an inspector calls, we're thinking about the early 1900s, and we're thinking about the evening. And you need to make sure that your design, whichever category that fits into, is helping to establish that. You're not gonna have someone in modern dress because it wouldn't be appropriate to the time period. The second thing you're thinking about is atmosphere. So what's the mood and the atmosphere of the play and the moment? How can your design help establish that? What colors are you gonna use? How bright are the lights gonna be? What kind of sound effects are you gonna use in order to establish the kind of tense atmosphere that comes through an inspector calls? And the third thing is the location. Obviously, Inspector Calls is set in one place. It's all in that one room. But how can your design help establish that? You wouldn't want to have um, something that wasn't appropriate to the design, like a character wearing a massive big fur overcoat the entire time, because that's not helping to establish the location when they're inside in a fancy dining room. So time, atmosphere, location, three really, really important things when we're thinking about design. Moving on. Step three, now this is where you start thinking about your subject specific terminology. And you're not gonna answer a 14 marker until you've got all of these three steps established, you've got some notes on them, you know exactly what you're doing for each one. Here is some examples of some subject specific terminology for each subject, if I were, uh, for each design. If I were you, I would pause the video now and have a little jot down of these if you don't already have them written down. If you don't know the meaning of any of these words, I'd use this opportunity to write down the meaning and to start adding these words into your vocabulary when you're writing and talking about drama and theatre. Loads and loads of examples. And as you're writing your 14 marker, you want to be using this terminology as frequently as possible. If you're not including terminology words in your paragraphs, you are just not gonna get as many marks. And just like it says in that last box, don't forget that you are making choices and you're making intentional decisions. If you choose to have a certain color, you need to be able to justify why that is important for establishing the time, atmosphere, location, or the intention and the themes of the performance. So every single decision you make is intentional and you need to explain why, and detail is vital. It's not enough to say that they'd be wearing a red dress or that the lights would be pink. You need to be able to explain how that's created, the smaller details of it, and why that's important. Making sure you're considering every single detail and using this terminology will al allow you to get into that top marks bracket. So step four. Now, if you haven't done any of the first three steps, don't move on. 
go back and do the first three steps before you do anything else, because otherwise your writing just isn't going to be at the standard it needs to be for a 14 marker. Now, before you do anything in step four, which is to structure and plan your answer, you are going to read the question. And I don't just mean glance over it once. I mean, really read it and really understand what it's asking you. You are wasting your own time if you write an answer that doesn't answer the question. If the question's asking you about status and you talk and you write for three pages about proxemics and costume and it's got nothing to do with status, you're not going to get the marks. And you've, it might be the world's most amazing answer, but if it doesn't answer the question, you're not going to get the marks. So in order to make sure that you are ready to answer the question, you need to underline the keywords and choose your design element. Now, a 14 marker will only ever ask you to answer one, about one. You're only writing about lighting or costume or set. You are not writing about more than one. So don't waste your time talking about lighting for three paragraphs if you're writing about the set. What you can do is let them melt into one another a little bit so you can mention it, but don't waste time talking about lighting if you're writing about set. You want to use words from the question in your introduction, and I, what that should say is in every single paragraph. As a director, I will be using the element of costume to ensure that I fulfill my intended effect, blah, 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 blah. You are using words from the question at all times. All this does is point your um, examiner in the right direction and demonstrate that you're really clearly answering the question. Then you've got three or four paragraphs, depending on how many ideas you want to give. Obviously, the more ideas you give, the better. In those each paragraph, you're going to describe your idea in detail and you're going to analyze it. So you're going to explain it a little bit more, explain what it's going to demonstrate. And then you're going to evaluate it, which means writing about how successful you think it will be, what effect you think it will have. Try to not waffle. Like I said before, the more you waste time talking about stuff that isn't important, you don't get marks. You are losing time. Don't forget this exam is quite difficult and you have to write really quickly. So make sure that you are writing. I'm just going to move myself so you can see the rest of it. Make sure that you're writing really really specifically, clearly answering the question. Don't do anything else. And remember, like we've just talked about, every single thing that happens on stage will mean something to your audience, whether you want it to or not. If you make a choice or don't make a choice, that will mean something to your audience. So you need to be really specific and really clear about every single thing that you are writing about. Use that to your advantage and allow your creative choices to demonstrate the themes of the play. So make sure that your use of proxemics does demonstrate the social class. Make sure that the red dress is showing that she maybe is becoming more of a socialist. Make sure that the inspector, you're using his costume to demonstrate the um, uncertainty around the character. Obviously, I'm thinking of those ideas off the top of my head, but that's the idea. That's what you can use this time for. And the last point is to just be creative. Now, as long as you can justify your reasoning behind the choices you're making, go for it. You won't get marks for ideas that don't make sense, but you will get marks for ideas that you can justify. So, move myself again. You can see here that I've given you an example question. So it says, use the start of the play, act one, there are specific, this is exactly what your question will look like. There are specific choices in the extract for designers. Discuss how you would use one of the design elements to bring this extract to life for your audience. Choose one of the following, one, and one is capitalized there because you only need to choose one of the following, set lighting or sound. So you're gonna choose set lighting or sound to bring the extract to life for your audience, okay? So what you need to make sure you're doing there is talking about the extract specifically, talking about one design element and bringing it to life, which is deliberately vague because it gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility within it. And here are those key points one more time. Making sure you have the understanding of the background information about the play, making sure your design is establishing time, atmosphere and location, making sure you're using subject specific terminology and structuring and planning your answer incredibly carefully and clearly. The thing with the 14 markers is the first couple of times that you plan them through, it will take a little while. 
But the more you practice, the more you do them, the quicker you'll be able to do them. And then you'll be able to make a 14 out of 14 off the top of your head as soon as you walk into that um, example. So the more work you put in now and the more practice you do as you're revising, the better. These are your key points. That's what you've got to make sure you're including at all times. I hope you enjoy a 14 marker. Let me know if you have any questions and I will speak to you soon.